Okay, we're gonna do it together. We're gonna build a full stack web application using only Kotlin. That's right, I said full stack, not half stack, full. We're gonna use Kotlin, IntelliJ, React. It's gonna have a server and it's gonna have a client. The server is gonna be written with Kotlin JVM. The client is gonna be written with Kotlin JS. Kotlin throughout the whole thing. And we're gonna be sharing code between the front end and the back end. You're not gonna be duplicating anything. We're also gonna be using core routines for both. We're also gonna create a JSON API and we're gonna share a type safe representation of it between the back end and the front end. What does type safe mean in this context? I have no idea, but it's gonna be really awesome. As you can see, I have my JetBrains hoodie I have the Kotlin Conf water bottle, so this qualifies me enough to be teaching you how to do this. Let's get on with it. The output is going to be a simple shopping list application that allows you to plan your grocery shopping. A very interesting project, I know. The user interface is going to be very simple. As you can see, there's a list of planned purchases that you want to buy as you're going to the supermarket. If the user clicks on an item in the shopping list, we're gonna remove it. That's what you expect when you click on an item for it to be deleted. The user can also specify a priority level for these items. So if you are entering an item and you append it with three exclamation marks, let's say, uh, we're gonna count those exclamation marks and we're gonna say this item has a priority of three, 10 would be very top, whatever you get it. The first thing you're gonna do is you clone this project repository from GitHub. And let's open it in IntelliJ IDEA. This template already includes all of the configuration you need, the JVM part, the JS part, and the common shared code. You don't need to change the Gradle stuff here. Now let's look at the plugins inside the Gradle script. Just like all Kotlin projects that target more than one platform, this is gonna have to be using the Kotlin multi-platform Gradle plugin. This provides you with a single point of configuration where you just define the configuration for all the targets. In this case, you have two targets, which is the JVM and the Kotlin JS. Also in this case though, you need the application plugin to run the JVM part and the serialization plugin. That's gonna turn the JSON response into something usable in your code, some data class that we're gonna, shopping list item, that's the data class that we're gonna use. So this target configuration inside of the Kotlin block is responsible for setting up the platforms that you wanna support. In our case, we have JVM, we have JS, server, client. This runs with Java, whatever that task means. This runs in the browser and you have this line here. Then you have your source sets. These are common from the Android world. These are where the resources, dependencies, and the language settings for each of the targets. So common main has all of these dependencies. It's used in this package. JVM main, all of these dependencies are used in that package, etc. That's about it for the Gradle configuration. What we're gonna do next might seem a little scary, no, I'm kidding. We're just gonna build the backend. We're gonna start building the backend. Typical backend is gonna have a CRUD kind of uh, operation kind of thing. Create records, read them, update them, delete them. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, for this shopping list, we're just gonna do creating new entries, uh, reading them, and deleting entries as we mentioned. To do so, we can use Ktor. It's a framework to easily build connected applications, web applications, HTTP services, mobile browser applications. That's what Ktor is. So it run, it, it's basically instantiating the server with Ktor. So we need to call the embedded server. That's a function from Ktor itself. It ships with Ktor. Uh, we're gonna use the Netty engine on port 9090. What's Netty? I don't Netty. The first API endpoint is going to be an HTTP method get. The route is going to be at forward slash hello. So you go to 0000, 000 port 9090 or localhost port 9090 slash hello. You're going to see our stuff. Let's start it. And the way we do that is executing the Gradle run task. 
this is going to run both the back end and the front end. If you just run the server from the play button at the top, you're only going to get the server. You want to do Gradle run so you get both. So it runs and now it's serving you hello API from the hello route through Netty on Ktor using Kotlin multi-platform. That's amazing. You now should be very happy. I was when, when I did it. Now, not so much. So now we're going to do something a little more complicated. We're going to install some Ktor plugins. And when I say install plugins, I don't mean f through Gradle or anything. It's uh, right inside the uh, the code. So we're going to do install content negotiation. Now you ask me what is content negotiation? I tell you, I have no idea. I'm guessing that it's just you're telling Ktor, hey, this is what I'm expecting as far as content coming from the endpoints that I'm telling you about. So the shopping list is going to be returned as a JSON object. I'm going to send you JSON stuff to know what you should post on the shopping list, etc. And then you got this scores thing, which I'm guessing, uh, no, this one, I'm sure that it represents uh, cross origin resource sharing. The meaning, I don't know, but this is what it stands for. Uh, inside of it is something very familiar. These are the, uh, the HTTP methods you're going to allow. So you're going to allow getting, posting, deleting, and you're going to say any host can do all of the above. This one is, it reduces the amount of data that's going to be sent over the wire right? G zipping, G zipping it. So in Kotlin multi-platform, we can define the data model once and share it between front end and back end. So we're going to need a, a data model for the shopping list item. Each item is going to have a text description, priority, like we said, and an ID. We have to have it is uh, sitting inside source common main. So here the serializable annotation comes from the multi-platform serialization library we imported a while ago. This allows you to define models directly in the common code, the one that's going to be shared by both the back end and the front end. So once you use this um, from the JVM and the JS platforms, the code for both of them will be generated to know how to use them on both sides. So serialization, deserialization, it handles both. This companion object stores extra stuff about the model. In this case, it's going to be the path under which all of the uh, API is accessible, shopping list. By doing this, um, you can then change the path to be whatever you want uh, without having to change it on both the client and the front end, uh, on both the client and the back end. They are both going to read from this one property. So just for this sample application. Yeah, we're computing the ID from uh, a hash code, <laughs> but uh, in this case, it's fine because it's just a sample application. Usually in production application, you would use uh, UUIDs uh, to auto increment something, you know, but it works in this case. So now we can use, uh, since there's no database, we can use this model to generate some, some data. So we have a list, cucumbers, tomatoes, orange juice, this is our list of uh, shopping list items for now. Then we will add the database. Now we create the routes. So under server, we're going to add this stuff. First of all, the routes are grouped based on this common path that we specified in the model shopping list. First, we have a get request. This, uh, this is to the model's path shopping list and it responds with the whole list. You will get the entire shopping list if you hit this route. The second one, if you hit this route, but with a post, you're going to be able to add an item to the list, meaning you place what you want to add in the body of the post. Then we're going to have the deletion. The deletion, you request to delete an item. Surprise. But in this case, you append the ID of the item you'd like to delete to the path. Now we just check that everything's working. We restart the application, head over the shopping list. We should see the list of items displayed as JSON because there is no front end yet. We're not rendering anything. There's just the back end serving you the stuff you told it to serve you in JSON format, of course. 
That's a that's a feature by itself, the deserialization and serialization of your uh, of your data class. This doesn't come for free. Now, to test that this is working, we go to Postman, we give it this body in the raw section, we specify uh, content type application JSON for it to work, otherwise it's not gonna work. So that's posting. You post it, you get it again, the item should be there, now you have peppers. Before, you didn't. Also, you see a 200, which means it worked. Let's try deletion. For deletion, you hit the same URL, but let's get some ID from any item here. Are they delete returned and okay, that it means it worked. You get the list again, the item is not there. That is a fully functional backend that you have now. That's it. Now you can apply to a senior backend developer. You will get the job. So now it's time to set up the front end. We're going to make a small Kotlin JS web app that's going to query the API that we wrote. It's going to show us the list of items. It's going to let us add items or remove items. So the idea here is to have the back end not only serve the code that's going to handle the requests, it's also going to serve the HTML page that's going to display the results and the JS file. So there's this root node for rendering components and the script tag that includes the actual application. This is how Kotlin Multiplatform deals with this kind of thing. I'm not going to go into detail with this stuff because I don't know it. So to make this version of the server usable, we're going to build a small Kotlin JS web app that's going to query the server's API, the API that we wrote. For simplicity's sake, we're going to serve the index HTML on the root route, meaning just forward slash. So localhost 9090, nothing else, you will get the shopping list. The code to do that is just the same get that we defined earlier, but this time it's going to be above the route for shopping list. It's just going to be forward slash. Call, respond, text, yeah, yeah, this, okay, I'm not sure what the rest means, but definitely inside it, get resource is going to get the index HTML and read the text from that. Index HTML is sitting inside common main. It's going to read it and the content type is going to be text HTML. Static, forward slash as well, resources, nothing. Don't ask me. Run the application with Gradle Run so you can get the front end and the back end you get Kotlin, hello Kotlin JS. So you now have a front end as well. It's not serving anything. It's not allowing you to do anything yet, but it is a front end. It's a shape that you see, not just a JSON result, right? Aren't you happy? Next, we're going to actually build the client, the one that's going to save us from everything. Uh, this is basically like Android's HTTP client. That's what we're building right? So we build the client and then you call the endpoints from the client. Remember? Do you remember? The gist of it is it's going to be like an object that's just going to allow us to get, uh, delete and post, right? Through the client. And then you, you have a repository, right? And in the repository, there's an HTTP client and then you make the calls and then you call the repository dot delete something. It's the same thing. Ktor uses Ktor dash clients library. There's a JSON feature. It uses Scotland X serialization. It takes care of automatically converting between the JSON response and your data classes. So in Android terms, this would be a JSON. So now we write a couple of suspending functions. These are going to be using coroutines because Ktor clients library already uses coroutines. The content negotiation is going to be JSON. We've seen this before, whatever that means. And then simply get shopping list is going to go to the client and actually do a get request on the routes that we provided, right? And it's going to say on the path, see path, and it's going to just going to get the body from that. The next one is going to do add shopping list item. It's going to take a shopping list item and it's going to do a post on the path again. Content type is going to be JSON, application JSON, just like we did in Postman. 
the actual body is going to be something that we give it, the shopping list item that you'd like to add. And deletion is the same. It's going to go delete request, given an ID. Same thing, just through code now, instead of doing it through Postman, so that you could do it later from the actual interface that we're going to write with React, right? So in, in React, you're going to do these calls through the client, right? Through the client. <laughs> Yeah. Cringe. Now, to build the actual interface, we are going to add two lines, but these lines are going to be monumental, right? We've laid the groundwork on the client and we have a clean API to access. You know, now we will do it in React, a React application, just like the pros. So instead of rendering the hello kotlin.js string, we're going to make the application render a functional app component, a React app. Yes, you heard that right. Create root container render app.create. We don't have app yet. We're going to do that now. And it's going to have the following requirements. We have to keep the local state of the shopping list to understand what element to display. We have to load the shopping list elements from the server, set the state to that, provide React functions to render the list. This is how you do it. First of all, there's the scope. We need the scope for the quarantines to launch. And then we're going to do this use effect once equivalent to compose launched effect. In there, we're going to launch with a scope, get shopping list. That's what you want to show at the beginning. We're going to have a header, easy h1 unordered list sort by descending over priority which is determined by what by the exclamation marks that we decided that each exclamation mark is going to be counted and is going to raise up the priority of each item so we're going to sort them by descending over that property and for each element in that we're going to have a list item with a key of the item itself and then the text of you just do plus string this is a Kotlin DSL that's going to talk to React in some way. Who knows? Finally, we hit 9090 localhost. And what do we see? We see the whole list rendered just like we want. These are our items. They're from our list that we defined. And there's your header. That's the front end. That's the web app. It doesn't allow us to add or remove anything yet remove why do i say remove in this way i'm not sure it doesn't allow us to remove anything yet but it it looks good you know it's it's a front end it's something 